Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And in today's On Shape Quick Tip, I'm gonna show you how to create this geometry here. It's kind of a fun little piece of geometry. You've got these three bands that are running in between one another. It's a helix that's running around a curve of a circular diameter. And this might be kind of a fun project to 3D print if you wanted to create some jewelry for someone. But I also thought this would be a nice opportunity for us to create some variables using a variable table in Onshape. And what the variable table in Onshape lets us do is it lets us create changes based on a table. So you'll see here if I change this dimension to 170, the bracelet rebuilds and gets larger. Or if I change this to 120, you can see that the bracelet rebuilds and gets smaller. And so what I'm gonna show you today is how to create these variables, how to create this variable table, and how to link these variables to your sketch geometry in Onshape. Let's start out by creating a new document here. So I'm gonna to choose to close this current document, and I'm gonna make a new document here, and I'm gonna call this document Twist Bracelet. Now, I'm gonna start out here by creating a new sketch on the top plane, and that sketch is just gonna be of a circle with a diameter of 160. So if you wanna follow along with me in this tutorial, this is where you can get started. Make a new document, make a circle at 160. And of course, if you like these step-by-step -step tutorials, be sure to hit the like button on this video. It is always very helpful. All right, so now we've created a circle with a diameter of 160. Now what we wanna do is we wanna link that dimension to what's called a variable table over here in Onshape. And so what I can do here is I can type in the variable name, I'll just call this one diameter, and then that diameter is gonna be linked to a length variable of 160. And so what we see is that over here in the on shape tree, we've now created a new feature called uh, X diameter 160. And it's a, it's a pound symbol there as well, pound symbol diameter 160. Now, in order for us to use this in the sketch, the variable needs to exist before the sketch. So I'm gonna take this sketch and just drag it down in the tree so that the variable exists first. And then I'm gonna edit that sketch. I'm gonna double click on that dimension and I'm gonna type in pound. So for me, that's shift in the number three and then DIA, pound DIA. And so we can see here that once we do that, this variable, this uh, pound DIA variable, is now linked to the diameter of that circle. And what that means is if I go back to that, that, that uh, variable table and I change that dimension to say 100, enter, we see that the circle immediately updates. If I change it to 200, enter, the circle immediately updates. And now I'm gonna change that back to 160. So I've established a link here between a dimension or multiple dimensions in my model and the values that are showing up here in the variable table. All right, let's close that variable table and let's create another sketch. This time I'm gonna create a sketch on the front plane. So I'm gonna begin a new sketch here. And for this new sketch on the front plane, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a line. This line is gonna start here and move over horizontally. And I'm gonna take this point of the line and I'm gonna give it a Pierce relationship, Pierce relationship here to that circle. Now I'm gonna get in and create a new dimension on that line. And when I go to create that dimension, what I can do is I can type in pound again, so shift and the number three. And this time I can choose to create a new variable. And so I'm gonna call this new variable twist radius or twist RAD. And I'm gonna assign a value there of 10 millimeters to that twist radius. So I press enter, 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 and we see that this line now has a dimension of 10 millimeters. But if I double click on that line, it's actually linked to twist radius. And if I look over here in the tree, I see that Onshape has created a new variable called twist radius with a value of 10 millimeters. If I were to exit that sketch and come over here to my variable table, you'll see that I can change this value from 10 to 20 and that line increases in length or maybe down to five, the line decreases in length and then I can change that value back to 10 millimeters. So this was kind of the foundation that I used to create that twisting bracelet that we saw when I started the video. Now, from here, what I did was I created a series of additional sketches of these lines, which are all linked back to that variable. 
So I started out by creating a new plane here at 45 degrees. So a new plane here at 45 degrees, a plane here at you know 90, which is already there, it's the right plane, a plane here at 45 degrees, a plane here, which is the front plane. Now I'm gonna reuse that original ske sketch plane that I created at 45 degrees, reuse here the right plane, and reuse here that second sketch plane that I created at 45 degrees. And then I'm gonna go around and just create a series of lines, which are vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and so on and so on all the way around. So now we've created all eight of those sketches. And for each of those sketches, what we did was we took this dimension, this 10 millimeter dimension, and we linked it back to that twist radius. Now, what this means is that if we edit our variable table and we change that value from 10 to 20, all eight of those lines will update. Or if we bring it down to five, all eight of those lines will update. Now we're going to use the endpoints of each of those lines and create a 3D sketch entity known as a fit spline. So you'll notice here that if we fly out this menu of reference geometry, one of the types of reference geometry we can create is a 3D fit spline. So for that 3D fit spline, we're gonna pick each of these endpoints of those lines that we just created. And you can see that Onshape is going around and tracing a new path which runs through each of those endpoints. At the end here, I'm gonna hit this check mark that says closed spline, and we see that Onshape now has created the perfect sweep path for us to create a sweep to create that twisting circular shape. Now, I do need to do one last step here, which is to create a new plane normal to the sweep path. And I'm gonna do that by showing that very first line again, picking that line and picking this 3D curve. And then I can go into my reference geometry and choose plane. And Onshape will now create a new plane perpendicular to that curve at that point. Now on that new plane, what I'll do is begin a new sketch and I'm gonna create a circle, but I also want the diameter of this circle to be linked to a variable. So once I get into the dimension command here for this circle, I'm gonna type pound, I'm gonna type new variable, and I'll rename this one to wire diameter, the diameter of the wire that's being swept around the model. I'll give that a diameter of 10 millimeters and we will hit enter, enter, and enter one more time. And there we go, that is our sweep profile. I will once again take this variable and just drag it up to the top of the tree. It's just kind of a best practice to keep your variables here at the top of the tree. And now I am ready to sweep that profile along the curve, the 3D curve, which is our path. And there we go. That creates our nice swept curve there, our nice wire being swept around and twisted around as it's sweeping. And we can hit the green check mark there. And now we are ready to create additional instances of this part in Onshape. And we can do that by going down here to the part studio, finding that body, doing a right mouse button and choosing copy. And when we go into copy here, you see there's a number of options for how we wanna copy this thing. Well, we're gonna copy it using a rotate option. For our axis, we'll choose this, this uh, vertical line here, and we'll say that we wanna copy that to say 60 degrees. All right, that looks pretty good. And let's do that one more time. So we're gonna do another copy of this thing. So we do a right mouse button here. Let's do a right mouse button on the second one, choose copy. Let's make sure that we can see that central axis sketch so we can select that. And we're gonna say rotate. And once again, we're gonna rotate about this sketch line here. And we're gonna rotate that to a distance of 60 degrees. And we hit the green check mark. And there we go. Now we've given ourselves that really nice wire kind of being twisted about as it's running through. Let's hide some of this geometry. We're going to hide our planes. Let's hide this sketch here. Let's hide this sketch here. Just a little bit of cleanup there. And wow, that thing is looking pretty good. If you want it to look even better, what you can do is right mouse button on each of these parts and you can choose edit appearance, kind of make this pop in some of these different, uh, you know, th these different um, bodies here. So we'll do edit appearance for the second one, which was copied from the first one. And we'll do an edit appearance here on this third one, which was copied from the second one. And there we go. That thing is looking pretty good. 
But now is when we can really take advantage of that variable table because now we can return to that variable table and we can choose to maybe decrease the overall diameter here to 120, kind of pull that thing in a little bit. Maybe we want to increase the diameter of the wire. Let's say we make that 15 millimeters instead of 10 millimeters. And wow, now that looks really tight. And like I said in the beginning, we could then maybe take this geometry, export it to a 3D printer and really create a nice, cool 3D print. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, be sure to like this video, leave me any comments or any questions you have down below. And of course, be sure to come back for the next On Shape tip.